Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today on the channel, we're gonna be talking about this Craftsman V60 chainsaw kit. So stay tuned. All right guys, this is the Craftsman uh, V60 chainsaw model number CMCCS660. All right, um, and this is the V60 um, version of it. What does that mean? Um, so if you look at the Craftsman stuff, um, there's a 60V and a V60. And if you didn't know, uh, Stanley Black & Decker, one of the large tool manufacturing companies that also owns Porter Cable, DeWald, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and obviously Black & Decker, Anyways, a bunch of other stuff. Um, bought some of the rights um, to the Craftsman stuff, and now they manufacture this V60 line under the Craftsman name and sell it at Lowe's and, I don't know, Ace Hardware and places like that. But anyways, um, do not confuse this with the 60V stuff, which is still sold at Sears. Um, so if you're gonna buy um, Craftsman stuff, I would definitely buy stuff that's um, under the Stanley Black & Decker lineup for multiple reasons. that were gonna be around for a lot longer than probably the Craftsman and Sears. Um, a lot of the engineering seems to be done um, by the Stanley Black & Decker group or the engineering team, which just seems to be better. The quality of tools under the Stanley Black & Decker uh, lineup are just going to be better than the Craftsman one. Craftsman is not what it used to be like 20, 30 years ago, even 30 or 20, uh, whatever. Anyways, um, so this model is pretty much um, the model um, that Stanley Black & Decker makes. Picked up at Lowe's, I was able to pick this up for roughly around $80. Um, as a kit, and that's an extremely great deal on this chainsaw kit. So I'm just gonna go back off the back and just say it. Um, this is gonna be the best chainsaw that you can get for the price, um, kicker for the price. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But anyways, um, watch my other video on how to do that if you haven't seen it already. So if I were you and looking for a chainsaw and homeowner type, um, you're not going to go commercial with it, or you could do like commercial with this too. Like if you pull up to a little house and they just want like one small tree trimmed down or just limbing or whatnot, it should be fine. Anyways, uh, the point is, um, let's talk about this. So this comes as a kit, and I've only seen this as a kit. I don't know if they sell it as a bear tool, but it only comes as a kit. In the kit, you get everything pictured here, except for the towel. Um, you get the chainsaw itself, the shroud, guard, um, the charger, and the battery. Um, and the battery comes, uh, it's a 60 volt battery and it's a 2.5 amp hour battery. Um, this is the charger that comes on it. It's a little interesting charger because most big power tool batteries that are not like this these days. Um, look at that. I'm not sure if that's all the balance leads or whatnot, but if you know what all those tabs actually do, probably balancing leads, throw it in the comments below. But anyways, this is the charger and um, this is the battery. Let's take the battery out before we, uh, Talk about it. So this is the battery. Um, and pretty much it has 15 cells in series. I guess it has 15 uh, 2.5 amp hour cells in series. Um, and that's how they get the, the uh, 2.60 volts out of it. So this is pretty much almost the same thing as a flex volt battery. Um, flex volts are 60 volts max. This is a V60. Um, they're both nominal at, um, or what, real under load would probably be about 54 volts or whatnot. Anyways, um, there's uh, 18650 cells in here it looks like, and there are 15 cells in series, and that's how they get that. So, uh, this is interesting. It does have a three, um, right now it's got two bars, but it has a three uh, battery status, three bar battery status gauge. It does not stay on when you press the button. It's only instantaneous when you press the button. But, if you get the whole kit, including the battery and the thing for 80 bucks, not complaining too much, just a little bit. So um, that's all you get in the kit, except for the instruction manual, which obviously you get, uh, but the shroud. And this is a brushless 16 inch chainsaw. Um, I think, um, I wanna say it looks like an Oregon bar or an Oregon bar um, because the stamps and um, oh, where the stamps are and the holes and the exact shape looks like the exact copy off of the DeWalt Flexfoot one. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit. So, um, but it's not notated or branded Oregon anywhere on here. So anyways, it's got all the same stuff as you would expect in any other uh, chainsaw, uh, battery operated chainsaw. It's pretty much, <laughs> very much like the FlexVolt chainsaw. But anyways, um, it has a chain brick as you'd expect. Um, and if you don't know what a chain brick is for, it's pretty much you're using it and you get kicked back or you fall 
your arm falls forward or whatnot, you break chain, uh, chainsaw, cuts off and doesn't cut your leg or arm off in the safety. It's got a safety switch um, and looks like it's programmed for the right-handed person, watch. Safety switch right here. You're gonna press it like this. So if you're left-handed, you could do it, but it's a lot more awkward if you're a left-handed person. Um, so, sorry guys. Um, this one's interesting. Um, maybe you're trying to gear towards homeowners or whatnot, but it's got a level on here. Um, I don't really, I've never really been in a situation where I really need to cut exactly with a chainsaw because if I was doing something like that, I would use like a band saw or a circular saw or something like that, um, which is going to be a lot more smoother and probably more accurate than a chainsaw. But it's got a level on there. Um, so, I mean, it's not dinging it. It's fine, it works great. Um, 16 inch bar, like I said, toolless chain tensioning system. And like the Flex Fault one, um, the, um, what do you call this thing? Um, the place where you put the chain and bar oil is almost in the exact same location. Um, so one of, the, one of the first things you need to do when um, you get this, besides start charging the battery, is you need to put uh, bar and chain oil in here. And if I were you, I would highly recommend you go with a thicker or the thickest bar and chain oil you can find. Um, because it is a self-lubricating and self-oiling system, um, when you're not using it for a while, it will leak. Um, and it's even leaking right now. And then when I picked it up, it was leaking at the bottom. So anyways, um, this is the chainsaw kit. Um, and let's talk about the toolless chain, chain tensioning system. Man, it's been a long day. So anyways, um, it's exactly like the FlexVolt, all right? So if you don't know about the FlexVolt one, pretty much how you need to do the, to um, change the tension on this is you pull this back, you loosen it, and then you use this um, knob right here to either tighten or loosen the chain. So watch, if I tighten this, watch this chain. Look at that, tightened, all right? Um, and then you put this back and you tighten it back. And like the flex foot one, it clicks, it starts clicking um, when you reach pretty much um, the tightness that you can put on it, all right? So um, we're not gonna make this into a chain, what's the right uh, tension for a chain, but I like mine like that, that's fine. Put gloves on because I didn't want to get my hand all oily and I'm about to eat. So anyways, um, this works fairly well. Um, I've used it a lot um, and preparing a head-to-head -head video with this and a bunch of other chainsaws um, was able to use it very thoroughly. I was able to get at least five, um, I think it was about, I don't want to say about five full cycles out of this battery with it. Um, and it definitely works better if you have a five amp hour battery. Let me go grab the five amp hour battery real quick. So this is the five amp hour battery. Um, so this is pretty much two of these, um, not in terms of size, but um, this five amp hour battery came out of a Craftsman V60 push mower. I got for about 140 bucks or whatnot. Check my other video on how I did that. But um, this battery, uh, this chainsaw kit, definitely performs better on the five amp hour one. Um, it is a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier. So just make sure you note of that when you start using it. Um, and for the fun of it, you can use the 7.5 amp hour one, but this is just a beast. I mean, this is just heavy. I wouldn't really do that. It works fine. Um, the biggest one I would go with is the five, mainly because the size, the weight ratio. Um, you do get, a uh, little bit more performance using this five amp hour one. I'm not sure why, uh, actually I know exactly why, because um, this has 15 cells and they're in series. This has 30 cells and there's two 15 cells or two 15 sets in series. Um, so because of that, you can pull more amperage um, from this battery pack. Um, and because of that, you can pull, uh, push a lot more power, um, energy or whatnot into this uh, chainsaw. So, um, like I said, preparing for a head-to-head -head video and I was able to um, uh, use a chainsaw a lot. Um, and that way, five um, times cycles through this, so it's pretty much cycled up. Didn't run into a problem. Battery did not overheat. Chainsaw did not overheat. But I will mention the bat this, this battery right here, the 2.5 amp hour one, got really, really hot. Um, and I had to let it cool off for at least an hour. Um, so it didn't cut off. Um, which almost worries me because I feel like there should be some thermal protection and maybe there is and it didn't get to that point, but it was uncomfortably hot um, when running this one. So um, if you have multiples of these, I would definitely swap them out to keep the batteries cool, um, let them last longer, but it did not overheat. Um, 
I was able to cut at least eight um, straight times um, through, uh, what do you call that, pine, um, wet pine. Through this wasn't a problem. I also did a, um, I forgot what the word was, but you were able to plunge this um, perpendicular um, long ways into, uh, not perpendicular, I can't think right now, sorry guys. Bury this bar into uh, pine a long way, and that is a very difficult cut for, a chain, for an electric chain, for any chainsaw. Uh, probably the most, one of the most stressful cuts on, on a chainsaw. And um, it worked fine, it did not overheat, um, worked like a champ. Um, this is a low kickback chain, um, and then you need a low kickback chain or something like this primarily because um, this thing is not a gas-powered beast, okay? It is a, a great tool um, for our electric chain. So, so all the safety function, like I said, it's got this VersaTrack um, thing where you can pull this, where'd it go? Pull this out, and there's a little hook, and it pretty much just lets you hang it. Um, I can't see, guys, sorry. It just, you can just hang it on the VersaTrack system. It also works on the Rubbermaid um, Fast Track system. So just know that. So um, like I said, this works very well. I was able to use it um, preparing for a head-to-head -head video. We'll throw some other clips on that. Um, cutting um, yellow um, pine where I'm at, it works perfectly fine. Um, oiling system works perfectly fine. Didn't have an issue with the oil on there. Um, like I said, you stick oil, and then when you clean it, after you use it, you need to clean the chainsaws, um, especially if not between each cut. But after each day, you need to clean them out. If, you, if you're in a long day, you need to clean out multiple times. It did get clogged a lot like any other chainsaw. Um, just clean it out with some WD-40, compressed air, and then put the battery back in, and then run it for about 20 to 30 seconds to let the oil get on the chain and the bar. This will help prolong the life of your tool not only the tool, but the chain and the bar because it oils up and helps prevent rust and keeps it all lubed and all that fun stuff. Um, it does have the plastic bucking spikes like the, a lot of the battery operated chainsaws. Um, it would have been nice if they put a, some of the metal ones on there. Yes, it costs a little bit more, but extra dollar or two, I think people would willing to pay for that to get the metal one. Um, this is one of those tools like you need to let the tool do the work. Like most cutting tools, you need to let the tool do the work. Do not put a lot of pressure or just bury this thing um, or push hard on it because you will stall it out, okay? Um, so just let the tool do the work and it'll be fine. It's not gonna be zip zip, but I mean, you're getting a battery operated chainsaw and this is perfectly fine. I would say this is more than um, you need and for a regular homeowner, um, 16 inch bar. It's perfectly fine. Um, you can put the 14 inch bar in here for the fun of it. I put the flex volt bar on here and it worked fine. Um, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit. So this, as, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Stanley Black & Decker, it seems like engineered this one, the V60 one. Um, and this thing right here, um, you can put, if you take this off, you can put this on the DeWalt flex volt chainsaw, okay? Um, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys. The DeWalt Flexivolt one, you can put on here, this item. Um, and a lot of the bolts that you, a lot of, I'll throw out some pictures, but a lot of the bolts um, that assemble the chainsaw right here are exactly the same, or look exactly the same, or exact same spots as the one on the Flexivolt, okay? All right, so this is the DeWalt, um, what do you call this thing? Guard or whatnot. Um, as you can see, they're almost exactly the same. Even if you look on the back, they look almost exactly the same, all right? So um, this nub right here prevents it from put, you being able to put this on the flex foot one, but if you just shave that off, you could put it on there, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't need to do that. Um, see, we're gonna take this DeWalt one, we're gonna put it right in here and put it on there. All right, so look at that. Perfectly fine, chain tensioning system works perfectly fine. It even looks like it was designed for this, okay? Um, and that's fine. I'm sure they tried to reuse as much of the parts or engineering um, thing work that they did to produce this one. Um, it seems to work perfectly fine. Um, if, if you're comparing those two, they feel almost exactly like the same chainsaw. And that's primarily because they're probably sharing a lot of the motors and these components. Um, but um, that's not a scientific test, but it does feel like this one is just a hair slower than the Flexfoot one. Um, they probably, I'm not sure if they did that to keep the DeWalt as a higher premium brand or whatnot. I'm not sure, 
but this one just feels a little bit slower than um, the Dewalt one. But when you're using it, they feel very similar, okay? Um, just most of you guys that are using tools know how your tools feel, and this, that's pretty much exactly what I mean. Um, Overmoded grip right here, which is perfectly fine. The battery slides in here. So this is one of those chainsaws where the battery um, is on the underside where you slide, where it slides in. Um, I don't want to accidentally kick on. All right, slides in like that and it makes it flush. Um, so it's, it's a little bit more bottom heavy instead of the battery being right here, like you would in the DeWalt saws or, any, or the Milwaukee or any of the saws, but it's perfectly fine. Um, I had no problem with it. Um, it didn't cut out or stall or too much on me. Like I said, battery got hot, but it didn't cut off, which worries me a little bit, but it's got all the basic safety stuff, works perfectly fine, performs like a champ, and especially if you're able to pick this up for 80 bucks or even less, which 80 is the lowest I was able to get it for. This thing is a steal. If you don't have one and you're looking for a chainsaw and you're looking at this video roughly at the time I recorded it, which is roughly, August 12th, um, 2019. Definitely check my other video to go figure out how you pick this up for 80 bucks. Um, this battery alone, I'm not sure how much this is, but it's 80 bucks, maybe. Um, most of these batteries are pretty expensive. So um, 80 bucks, steal, go out and get it right now. Um, I'll throw out some clips towards the end that you can see me cutting with it. Works like a champ, all right? Um, and especially if you get um, like the hedger, string shimmer, blower, whatever, they all come with 2.5 amp hour batteries. So make sure you can just all swap them out. They're all in the same kit. Um, if you get the lawnmower, the self-propelled one, or self-propelled one comes with the 7.5, but if you get the push one and it comes with the five and you can use the five on here and it gives it a little bit more performance. So um, just make sure you keep that in mind. Um, if you have enough batteries, you got all the tools uh, lineups that are posted in other videos. You could probably run this most of the day. Um, my best guess is um, for me, I'm pretty sure the battery will overheat before the chainsaw, so you'll be good to go. Um, like I said, this is a great chainsaw, great for any homeowner out there, even some like commercial guys who want to just do a little bit uh, tree trimming or if they get called out and, and starting early in the day or they just need to cut off some limbs, limbing or whatnot. Um, you don't have to worry about gas, mixing fuel, having gas, worry about spark plugs, carburetors and all that stuff, especially if you don't use it for a while. So if you don't use it for a while, like I said, make sure you oil it up um, before you store it. Um, it does seem to leak, so if depending on how much you care about that, you may want to drain it. Um, There's one thing I do want to note about this. Um, it does not have a variable speed trigger. Uh, once the chainsaw is engaged or on or rolling, it's pretty much just all one speed. So it's a little bit difficult to feather it because it's not a variable speed trigger. So um, you haven't really run into a problem with it. It does take a little getting used to if, you do, if you're used to feathering um, gas tools or whatnot a lot, but it's just something to note.
And that's it. Hope this video has helped you guys out. And then we'll see you guys next time.